logarithms. We dealt with exponential functions before. So the common logarithm, meaning that it has base 10, comes from this idea that if 10 raised to the x power is equal to y, that's an exponential function because the variable is in the exponent, then log base 10 of y is equal to x. Well, it turns out when the base is 10, we don't put that subscript right there. We just write the log of y is equal to x. You'll notice on your calculator, there is a log button. Okay, there is a log button that's right beside the number 7. Um, and you can type in a number right there and it'll give you an answer. Uh, however, there are some logarithms that we can kind of figure out on our own. So we're going to start talking about that first. Without using the calculator, we're going to find the value of the logarithm. So what a logarithm means is if we go back to the original uh, definition here, what this log of 10 to the 2.5 says is the base, okay, base 10, where there's no base down here, so it's it the base 10, the base raised to some exponent is equal to this number right here, okay? So really what this is saying is, I like to put a variable in there, okay? 10 raised to some exponent is equal to 10 to the 2.5. Well, if they have the same base, the only way they're going to be equal is if their exponents are equal. So that means that this logarithm is equal to 2.5. Okay? The log of 10 to the 2.5 is equal to 2.5. What about the log of 100? Okay? The log of 100 is saying the base, base 10, raised to some power is equal to 100. Well, what power is that? 10 to what power is 100? 2. Okay? So the log of 100 is equal to 2. The log of 10,000. The log of 10,000, 10 to the 4, is equal to 10,000. So this is equal to 4. Express this in uh, fraction form. Okay, 0 0.01 is one one hundred. Okay, the second place is the hundredth place, so that is one one hundred. Okay, so we know ten squared is equal to one hundred. How in exponents? How does it change to move to the denominator? With exponents, how can we move numbers to the denominator? What do we do when we have negative exponents? How do we get rid of negative exponents? We move them. Okay, if they're in the denominator, we move them to the numerator. If they're in the numerator, we move them to the denominator. So that means 10 to the negative second power is 1 over 100, or 0.01. So the log of 1 over 100 is negative 2. For the e, log of negative 0.001. Can we raise positive 10 to a power and get a negative number? No, it's impossible. You cannot take the log of a negative number. Okay, This is undefined. Mindy, undefined. You cannot take the log of a negative number because you cannot raise a positive number any power, positive or negative, and get a negative number. It's impossible. Okay. Um, then the last one, this one looks a little weird. How about we begin by rewriting 10 squared times 10 to the fifth? What happens when we multiply things that have the same base? What do we do with their exponents? Add them. So that's 10 to the seventh. So the value of this logarithm is 7. Okay. Now, the whole point of this was to evaluate them without a calculator. Let me just show you how you can check this. Okay, I mentioned that the log button is beside the 7. So log of, it automatically starts your parentheses there. Just in case you're unsure if you dealt with the 10 squared times 10 to the 5th correctly, uh, go ahead and put in the original problem. Close your parentheses. And it's also
clean. All right, let's look at example two. Without using a calculator, find between which two consecutive integers the value of each logarithm will lie. All right, so that sounds a little confusing. Let's talk about it. The log of 25. The base is 10. That says 10 to some power is 25. Well, we know that we can't raise 10 to a whole number power and get 25, right? Because 10 to the first is 10, 10 squared is 100, we totally just jump over 25, okay? But that must mean that the log of 25 is between 1 and 2. Because 10 to the first is 10, and 10 squared is 100. Well, that's not a very good way of writing it. Let's get 25 right there. Okay, because 25 is between 10 to the first and 10 squared, then the log of 25 must be, must be between 1 and 2. Okay, this is the answer that I'm looking for here. Okay, the other part is just to explain. Okay, the log of 314. 314, let's figure out what, between what two powers of 10 that lies. Well, 10 squared is 100. 10 cubed is 1,000. So that must mean that the log of 314 is between 2 and 3. And I can find out exactly what it is just to check that. The log of 314 is 2.3. Four nine six nine, and it keeps going. Okay, that is between two and three. Okay, 3.14. 3.14. Let's see here. So 10 to the first is bigger than 3.14. So let's see here. What's the next power below one? The power of zero. 10 to the 0 is 1, so 3.14 is between 1 and 10, so that means that that log is between 0 and 1. 10 to the 0 is 1, raised to the first is 10, 3.14 is between 0 and 10. And this last one that we're going to do Point zero zero five, the log of 0.005. Uh, I think it's helpful to put this in fractional form. So tens, hundreds, thousands. So that's 5 over 1,000. Okay. 5 one thousandths is bigger than 1 one thousandth. And let's see here. Uh, one one thousandth would be ten to the negative third. Because ten cubed is one thousand, negative ten to get to the bottom. Um, so the next consecutive integer, the next integer would be negative. Okay. Uh, consecutive integer, so that means negative two is consecutive. Uh, ten to the negative two is one over one hundred. That is bigger than five one thousandths. So that means that the log of 0 0.005 is between negative 3 and negative 2. I would definitely want to check that one in my calculator just to make sure the log of 0 0.005 is negative 2.3. That is between negative 3 and negative 2. All right, so we are going to look at some exponential equations. Okay, we're talking about logarithms, but the way that we solve exponential equations is using logarithms, so to speak. Okay, so the first few examples here are pretty simple. Uh, if we are trying to solve 10 to the x equals 100, well, that's pretty straightforward, right? What is x? 2. Well, it's not the log. Okay. It's just 2. 10, 10 to the second power is 100. Okay. 
Okay, so that one you really don't have to know anything new. You need to solve that one. Now, let's look at B. The little toy spot. X plus 2 is the exponent there. 10 to the X plus 2 is equal to 100. Well, if you kind of work backwards from what we just did, you can figure out that that's 0. But let me show you another way of looking at this problem. Um, we can rewrite 100 so that it has the same base, base 10, as the other side of the equation. We can rewrite 100 as 10 squared, and if you have the same base, then the exponents must be equal to each other, and you can solve for x that way. So that says x equals, that confirms that x does equal 0 in this equation. Okay, let's pick it up another little notch there. 10 to the 3x plus 1 is equal to 100. So it's not quite as straightforward and easy to figure out as B. Uh, but let's do the same thing that we did with B. Let's rewrite 100 as 10 squared. They have the same base, so their exponents must be equal to each other. So that says 3x plus 1 must equal 2. And then we can solve that for x. 2 minus 1 is 1. Divide by 3. That says x is equal to 1 third. Now, d switches things around a little bit. We put something in front of the exponential function. Okay, so we've got to begin by moving that 3. So it's being multiplied, so we divide both sides by 3. You really don't have to have the parentheses around the 10 there. Okay, it was just there to express the multiplication. 300 divided by 3 is 100. So same thing we've been doing. 100 can be rewritten as 10 squared. So x plus 3 is equal to 2. Subtract 3 from both sides. That says x equals negative 1. Now, e is 2 times 10 to the x is equal to 600. So we've got to get the exponential by itself. We divide both sides by 2. So we have 10 to the x is equal to 300. Okay, 10 to the x is equal to 300. Well, this is the first time that our equation hasn't been equal to 100. Okay, um, we cannot raise 10, we cannot rewrite 300 to it as base 10. There's no way to raise 10 to the power to get 300. So here's where the logarithm comes into play. Okay, If we rewrite this in logarithmic form, okay, it's log, the base is 10, the x and the 300 are going to switch places. So it's the log of 300 is equal to x. The log of 300 is equal to x. And then I'm going to leave my answer in log form. Okay? I'm going to leave it as the log of 300. That is the answer. Um, now, I know that that value is between 2 and 3. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and type it in just to uh, see what its exact value is, but I would prefer that you just leave the, the answer in log form. So it's approximately 2.48. Approximately 2.48. I like this answer the best, but if you really want to know, it's about 2.48. Okay? Now, F. 10 to the 2x is equal to 500. There is nothing in front of my exponential. I cannot write, rewrite 500 as 10 to some power, so I'm going to have to resort to log form. So that is the log of 500 is equal to 2x.